Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith and welcome to my review of The Invisible Man. Now, one of the things we are seeing with theaters over the last few weeks is because of everything that's going on, movies that were recently released in theaters are getting to a direct-to-video format much quicker. So The Invisible Man is available for you to rent from either the Google Play Store or the Apple Store, as well as I believe you can also access it from cineplex.com. Now, what happens is you pay, I believe it's about $20, and you have it available to watch for 48 hours. So if you want to get together you know, with the people that you're with and, and watch this film, you have it available for 48 hours. I will tell you, The Invisible Man, in my opinion, not for small kids. Now, I think two of my big frustrations with this film was, first of all, uh, there was a lot that was shown in the trailer. I don't recall seeing the trailer for this movie before I saw it, so that definitely helps with my experience. And I need to do a blog on the correlation between my enjoyment of films that don't give away a lot in the trailer and those that do, um, because I did not see the trailer going into this, but had I seen the trailer, I might not have enjoyed it as much because there's just so much given in the trailer. And the second thing is how it was marketed. Um, of course, this is a Bloom House movie. Uh, Jason Bloom, the producer, who's done uh, such uh, series like Insidious and The Conjuring, and um, I believe he was also involved with The Purge. Great producer, produces a lot of fantastic films. Not how I would have marketed this film, and I'll get to that in a second. Now, this film uh, stars uh, Elizabeth Moss, who a lot of people will know from... Uh, the Handmaid's Tale, and why wouldn't she? She's won a Golden Globe for her performance in that. I know it's an extremely popular show. Respectfully, I've never seen it. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Um, but this movie shows that she can do a lot more than just The Handmaid's Tale. In this film, she plays Cecilia, a woman who is in an extremely um, ab uh, abusive relationship, very abusive mentally in terms of being told what to do, what to wear, where to go, how to act. She feels like she's being controlled. And just before you can say, hey, I'm watching the R. Kelly story, you realize that actually, no, she's being um, uh, victimized by this guy by the name of Adrian. Now, Adrian ends up dying and we think, okay, well, you know, she, now she can go on with her life. But a lot of interesting things start happening and she's convinced that Adrian's still alive, even though everyone around her is saying, no, he's dead. Could he be invisible? Like, what's happening? Um, this film does a very good job of kind of bringing what I like to call the heebie-jeebies to the audience because there are a lot of cool things that are happening in this film, some of which you will see in the trailer. But if you skip the trailer and go right to the film, you're going to be very entertained because this is a strong thriller. Now, when I say I didn't like the way that the film was marketed, it's marketed in terms of, oh, this is a Bloomhouse movie. And with all due respect to Bloomhouse, who has done some really great things, it should have been marketed as this is a Lee Wanell movie. Now, for those of you who don't know, Lee Wanell is the guy, the driving force, the creator, if you will, behind the Saw franchise. I think Lee Wanell is probably one of the one of the most talented up and coming filmmakers uh, that we have right now because I've yet to see him be involved with a movie that isn't entertaining. Every time I see that Lee Wanell is involved with something, I'm running to the theater. As I said, I didn't see the trailer for this. So when the when the credits play over and you're seeing directed by Lee Wanell, I'm like, of course it was, because it was so entertaining. Elizabeth Moss does a really good job with a script that Lee Wanell not only wrote, but exceptionally directed as well. I think that this is a film that um, a lot of people will enjoy. Uh, this is a film that's going to make you say, hey, maybe Keith's right about this Lee Wanell guy because he's a really entertaining filmmaker. And in a time where you don't always see great films with a strong lead female character, Hello, Invisible Man. So I definitely recommend checking this out. Uh, I give this movie a B plus. Really enjoyed it. I think you will as well. As I mentioned, might want to put it on when the kids go to bed. Uh, if you get a chance to see The Invisible Man, let me know what you think. CFL underscore fan on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Witty Whittier and WittyWittier.com. Thank you so much for checking this out. My name is Keith and I'll see you at the movies.